National Broadcasting System presents I Love the Mystery. adventure thriller, Temple of Vampires. See now, Reggie, how long ago did we leave Matagalpa? Now, was that the last big jungle town we passed over? Yeah, Matagalpa. Fifty-five minutes ago, Jack. Then we should ought to be getting pretty close to Boaco. Boaco, Doc. What's this? Boaco, not Boaco. You don't say. Well, anyway, uh, ain't we almost there, Jack? Yes, keep your eyes open, Reg. We ought to be sighting Boaco any moment now. I know. Nothing on the horizon as yet. Is that a stopping point? Yes, I wired ahead from Guatemala City for them to be ready to refuel us. Well, if I remember my Central America... It ain't gonna be much for airport. No, they told me in Guatemala City they'd have to refuel by hand. Oh, you want to do any checking on the motors while we're down there, Reggie? That's just what I had in mind. We're throwing a little oil somewhere. We are? Oh, I say nothing serious, but I think I'd better have a look. Yes, don't take anything for granted. After we leave Boaco, there's nothing between us and 500 miles of jungle but the town of Huigalpa. <laughs> and there's no airport there. Wow, jungles. 500 miles of them. You sound as though you're looking forward to enjoying the prospect, sonny. Of course. Anything to make me forget that awful Richard curse and all those murders. Well, a little jungle goes a long way for my money. And what happens after we leave Boaco, Jack? Well, we fly between the Huapi Mountains and Lake Nicaragua. Lake Nicaragua? Is it much of a lake? Only 50 miles long. 50 miles? Well, that's an infant ocean. A lot of Indians all along the lake, I understand. From the lower end of the lake to San Jose, Costa Rica is another 150 miles. And that's our destination for tonight? San Jose, Costa Rica? That's right, sugar, and we'll be getting in there around 8 or 9 o'clock. Yeah, if we're lucky. Should be still light enough to land without flares. Gee, San Jose, Costa Rica. Doesn't that sound like fun? And then what do we do? Well, Sonny, then's about the time and place that I start looking for trouble. What kind of trouble? Well, I don't know about the rest of you, but I know what kind I'm looking for. <laughs> yes. You'll no doubt find it, too. Doc, you don't mean something tall, dark, and lovely. Honey, the girls down in this part of the world have the biggest black eyes and the longest eyelashes of any girls in the whole wide world. Oh, my, my. How can you bear to wait? I can't, hardly. <laughs> and you, Jack, what sort of trouble are you going to look for? I am reserving the right to pick and choose my brand of trouble when we get there. And man, oh, man, is there plenty to pick and choose from. Anything you want, from an ordinary gambling house brawl with cutting knives to black magic and native voodoo rites. Really? Well, you never saw the like of it. Well, Sonny, the last time we was down this way, Reggie almost got himself skinned alive trying to save a half-breed girl from an Indian sacrifice. Did you save her, Reggie? No. Nope. But, Doc, that wasn't near San Jose. That was in the back country further east. Oh, sure, of course it was. But it's all the same in this part of the world. Stuff not only happens, it comes right up and smacks you in the face. You boys must know a side of Central and South America I never knew. You've been here before? Yes. Of course, I always stuck pretty close to the civilized areas. Well, Doc's laying it on pretty thick. The average traveler's as safe in Central America as he is in his own doorstep. you got to go looking for trouble here, the same as in any other part of the world. Uh-huh. What about you, Reggie? Me? Yeah. What sort of trouble are you going to look for tonight? Oh, look here. I think I'll take it as it comes. I think I'm going to feel cheated, however, if I don't find somebody who wants to do a bit of brawling, sailor fashion. A brawl? Why, Reggie, and you look so gentlemanly. What would make you want to fight? Money, politics, women. Oh, look here, does one need a reason? Oh, my goodness. What sort of men have I got mixed up with? Didn't you ever daydream, Sonny? Oh, so this is daydreaming. What kind of trouble are you be wanting? Oh, I hadn't thought. Let's see. 
Are the men as handsome as the girls are beautiful? And you'd better forget that. Why, Jack, why? Well, we're going to have other things to do besides look after you. Yeah, honey, we're going only going to have one night in Costa Rica. We don't want to spend all our time down here saving you from a fate worse than death. Oh. Well, you heard me. Now, now, you boys look here. You pay attention to your own brand of trouble. Let me take care of mine. Quite. I'll buy that. And see that you remember it. All right. Jack, hmm? Guaco coming up. Good. Can you spot the airport? Mm, not yet. Do you mind taking a squint through the glasses? Oh, well, here they are. Oh, thanks. Looks like quite a place. Yeah. How queer the way it seems to be laid right down in the middle of the wilderness. Now, I've got it, Reggie. Field's right straight ahead. Uh, on this side of the town? Yes, better start dropping down. Down we go. Watch it, Sonny. Uh-huh. How long will we be here? Not more than 20 minutes, I hope. Well, just long enough to stretch my leg. And my stomach's telling me it's time to eat. Me too. I hope they have better coffee than we got in Guatemala City. I'd better circle the strip to get the feel of the port. Seems to be a bit small for a ship this size. Good idea. Yeah, I see they're expecting us. They've got a stack of five-gallon cans of gasoline out on the field. You mean they pour the gasoline in five gallons at a time? That's how they do it down here. All right, hang on. Here we go down. Hold everything. Nice going, Reggie. How does she handle? Beautiful. Take her right up alongside the cans of gas. Right on. So far, so good. Yep. Open her up, Doc. Everybody out. And a pleasure it is. You folks go ahead. I'll supervise the refueling. Hey, that's no fun. Go ahead, Doc. You and Sonny hunt up something to eat. I'll help Reggie check the oil pumps. Okay. Come on down, Sonny. Ooh. Oh, I'm stiffer than I thought I was. Jump. I'll catch you. All right. Here I come. I got gotcha. you. And I never held a prettier arm full of fluff and feathers. Oh, put me down, you egg. Now, why'd you have to say that? Doc, you're shocking the natives. Well, do them good if you ask me. Oh, Doc, you fool. Well, if you insist. <laughs> ah, there you are, on your feet. <laughs> and not a bad arm full of girl, if anyone should ask. Did you just notice? Yes, sir. I'm beginning to wonder where you've been all my life. Don't tell me I roused the sentimental Texas boy in you. Well, something went and made my heart go flip-flap. Flip-flop, Doc, not flip-flap. Jack, you wasn't supposed to be listening. <laughs> yeah? Yeah. Never mind. It wasn't important. What you mean, it wasn't important? Of course it was important. And I thought you two were looking for a place to get some food. Well, where are you going, fella? Well, I got to take care of the clearance papers and pay for this gasoline. I'll join you later. Well, how about it, Sonny? Oh, yeah. I'm crazy to look around. Okay, come on. We won't see any of the town, I guess. No, it's over that way. <laughs> Look at yonder at the Indians in blankets are squatting on the edge of the field. <laughs> they act as though they didn't believe their eyes. I don't reckon airplanes are one of the things they see the most down here. Goodness. It's positively hot. <laughs> Lady, you're in the tropics now. I know. It's like a new world. Down here on the ground, Boaco looks more than ever like it was carved out of the wilderness. And what a wilderness. Look at the jungle all about us. Yeah, stuff sure grows down here. It looks so rank and, and deadly. Every plant trying to strangle the life out of every other plant. Murder in plant life, huh? Yeah, that's just what it looks like. Vicious, unwholesome murder. Hey, here. This looks like it'd be an eating joint. Shall we try it? Oh, Doc. It's dirty. Of course it's dirty. We don't have to eat the dirt, do we? Well... If we don't get something besides food in here, I'll be surprised. Well, let's have a look anyway. Door open, no screens, flies everywhere. Hi, friend. Uh, would you maybe have some coffee? Eh, hey, sure, I got coffee. Then we'll have two coffees. Uh, what else you have on the menu? The beans. Want any beans, son? No, for heaven's sake, no. Is this kind of weather? Well, what else you have besides beans? You don't like beans. No, neighbor, we don't like beans. What else you got? Maybe you like some frijoles. Frijoles? What you mean, frijoles? That's just south of the border for beans. Sure it is. Is that all you got in this flight trap? Frijoles, beans, what more is there? <laughs> I guess we're going to take beans and like it. Hey, you got any bread? Tortillas. Yeah? Well, look, is this the only eating place around here? Uh, what's the matter you say that? What's the matter with this place? Well, fella, it is kind of dirty now, ain't it? You got to admit that. You say this place is dirty? That's right. I say this place is dirty. Sure it's dirty. Who cares? <laughs> you win, mister. Give us tortillas, frijoles, and coffee. Ah, now you talk sense. You gringos make me sick to my stomach. All gringos make me sick to my stomach. 
Well, I guess we're all ready to take off now, Jack. All right, pile in. Doc shift at the controls. Yeah, close her up. Let's get going. Hey, Sonny, what did them beans do to you? They give me indigestion, plus heartburn, plus the hiccups, plus one. Well, I hardly touched them. But it was good coffee. All set, Doc. Let her go. Okay. Watch it. Hold your hat, kid. Here we go. Shoreline. Good. You folks can relax and sleep off your beans. You know, I like that stop best of all. I really got the feel of the jungle tropics. Lazy and dreamy, just a little bit rotten and dangerous. Yeah, that's life in the tropics as she has lived. Our first real Hello, taste. everybody. What's that? I just said hello. Jack, I say a valley infant. Why, Jack, it's a little boy. Oh, where did you come from? Back in there. Back in the luggage compartment? Oh, look here. We've got a blooming stowaway. Where did you get on this plane? Back in San Diego. You've been on this plane since we left San Diego? Sure. But, little boy, where are your mother and father? I haven't got any mother. My father's back in San Diego. This is great. But don't you know you shouldn't have done this? Your father must be terribly worried. Oh, no, he isn't. He put me in here. Your father put you in this plane? Uh-huh. He gave me a package of sandwiches and told me to stay here until I got hungry. You you mean your father abandoned you? I don't know. He just said to stay in there till I got hungry. Well, what are you going to do now? Oh, what is there to do? I mean, if we land in San Jose, we'll take him to the American consul. Will he see that he gets back to the United States? Well, he'll have to. Hey, what's your name? Hermie. Hermie what? That's all, just Hermie. But Hermie... What's your father's name? His name's Hermie, too, and I'm hungry and thirsty. Oh, of course you are, darling. All right, Reggie, break out some cheese and crackers. And some of that chocolate. Oh, Joe, wet nurse to an unwashed juvenile. Oh, shame on you, Reggie. How old are you, darling? I'm seven. I'm, please don't call me darling. Well, of course I won't. I'm a man, and women are no good. Oh? <laughs> and put that in your pipe and smoke it, Sonny Richards. Yeah, that puts me in my place, all right. <laughs> Boy, I sure do like aeroplanes. Oh, you do? Yeah. When Pop said I was going for an aeroplane ride, I just about busted my britches. <laughs> <laughs> well, here you are, Hermie. Sink your teeth into this. Thanks. I guess you fellas are a bunch of right guys. <laughs> Some adventure, huh, Jack? Yeah, great. Yes, sir. Now, if we only had a big box of sand, we could start a kindergarten. <laughs> Quite a body of water, all right. Where are we now? Well, Hermie, over on our right is Lake Nicaragua. Uh-huh. And those snow-capped mountains on our left are the Huapis. And what's down below us? Jungles, my fine young stowaway. With tigers and bears in them? Well, I don't know about tigers and bears, but there's plenty of spotted panthers and snakes. Not to mention a few alligators and wild Indians. Indians? Is our Indians? And how? With paint on their faces and bows and arrows up both sleeves. What sleeves? Could we go down there? Hey, I hope not. Oh, couldn't we, fella? <laughs> no, I'm afraid not. And look, how about you calling me Doc, which is my name? All right, Doc. Why can't we go down, Doc? Well, didn't you just hear Sonny say she didn't want to? Oh, Sonny's a girl. Hey, listen, Hermie. Do you have to keep throwing that up to me? Well, you are a girl, ain't you? Well, can I help it? Girls ain't good for very much, and not like men. <laughs> I say the line has a philosophy about women, apparently. And I suppose you agree with it. Well, I don't know. Did I say so? I don't like that dirty laugh. <laughs> well, what's your name, Charlie? I'm Reggie York. Huh. I don't like that name very well. Don't you now? Yeah. What's yours? Mine? 
You can call me Sonny. Okay. What's his, that fella over there? That's Jack. He don't like me, does he? You don't think so? Jack? Why, of course he does. No, he don't. He don't talk to me. Now, you hear that, Jack? Hmm? You asleep? No. Hermie here says you won't talk to him. Did he? Oh, Jack, Hermie's a good little guy. I don't doubt it. Well, look at what's come over Jack. Looks like he's got a fit of molly grubbles. And all on account of Hermie. Are you piloting this ship? That's right, I am, Matt. Well, how about keeping your mind on the controls? Hey, you have got it bad, haven't you? Say, what does a fella do when he wants to rest in an airplane? Getting tired? Huh? Who said anything about getting tired? Men don't get tired. That's right, Hermie, but men do have to rest sometimes. Sure, that's what I mean. Well, you see that blanket on the floor back there? Yeah. Well, when I need a rest, I go back and lie down on that. Is it okay for me? It most certainly is, any time you feel like it. Thanks. I guess I will. Jack? Yes? You don't like kids? Sure. Then what's the matter? Did anyone say there was something the matter? Oh, but Jack... It's just as you said, the minute we reach San Jose, we can turn him over to the American consul. That's right. Then why cut him dead for the three or four hours he's with us? Well, maybe it's the kid, and maybe it isn't. All I know is that something's wrong. Wrong? Just just what are you driving at, Jack? I don't know. Just a feeling. You mean you sw- smell trouble, fella? Yeah. You hear that, Reg? Quiet, and I don't like it a little bit. What's the matter with you folks? Well, it ain't nothing to be laughed at. When Jack smells trouble, it means something. Oh, what are you talking about? You mean you boys are superstitious? Premonitions. Men who live by their wits stay alive by paying attention to their hunches. Oh, for Pete's sake. We find a seven-year-old boy stowed away on the plane, and immediately everybody acts like the end of the world has come. How does the instrument board look, Doc? Nothing out of kilter here. How far would you judge we are from the lake? Twenty-five miles, I guess, offhand. I've been keeping a middle course about halfway between the mountains and the lake. Uh Uh-huh. How about getting over nearer the lake? If you say so. But, Jack, what's that for? It it takes us off our course. Well, if we had to make a sudden landing, we'd have a better chance along the shore. Jack, are you being serious? I don't know any more than you do. Oh, I think this is a lot of nonsense. How much altitude, Doc? Upwards to 3,000. Well, that's plenty. Mind if I take the controls? They're yours, son. You're welcome to them. Come on, slide in. Thanks. Oh, I I wish I knew what this was all about. Look, sonny. A good nose for trouble has saved our skins more times than I can count on my ten fingers. That's quiet. When Jack says there's something in the wind, keep your peepers open. Oh, Reggie? Yes, Jack? Get out the maps and look over the towns in this area. Before you can say Jack Robinson. Oh, and Reggie? Yes? When you've finished with them, put them back in your pocket where they're safe. It's as good as done. You know, I ain't seen Jack worried like this, and I don't know when. Why does he want Reggie to put the maps in his pocket? Well, just for instance, supposing we is to crack up and the plane was to burn. Doc, what do you mean? Well, nothing. Only if we were to be left on foot, these maps would be mighty handy to have to know which way to head to. But, but, but you mean we're in danger of, of cracking up? Sugar, if we knew what was the matter, we wouldn't... Well, we'd be doing something about it, not sitting here talking. And it's all based on... <laughs> just on Jack's feelings? Every smidgen of it. Nearest I can make out, the closest town is about 50 miles on the other side of the lake. Well, that don't do us a precious lot of good on this side. Yes, I know it. Nothing on this side at all? Nothing on the map. I suppose there must be villages, but not important enough to show here. And supposing there are, what good's a village? Well, any port in a storm is a good motto. I'll go up and tell Jack what I've found. Well, isn't this pleasant? All part of the game, Sonny. You asked for it. Yeah. You want to make a bet? Well, I admit I do like my gambling. I'll bet you five dollars we land in San Jose on schedule and no trouble. Hey, Sugar, don't say that. Oh, why not? Well, haven't we got enough trouble without you throwing up a challenge like that? (laughs) Honest to goodness, Doc. You and your Texas superstitions. You don't get it, Sonny. It isn't superstition. That's how a soldier of fortune stays alive, being one jump ahead. It's part of our job to see what's coming. Now, we've all been doing it so long, it's, well, it's about like... Well, a sixth sense or second nature to us. You don't mind if I think you're a little bit nuts. No, you go right ahead. Oh, you give me the willies. It's all so silly. Well, maybe it is that. Oh, what Jack have to say, Reggie? Just shrugged and said we were out of luck if anything went wrong now. No towns or nothing, huh? No. Reggie, mm-hmm. are you as obsessed with this evil eye rubbish as Doc is? Evil eye? Well, whatever you want to call it. But what's so unnatural around of this world about a premonition? You don't think there's anything wrong with it? Not at all. Something in Jack is simply tuned a bit finer than in the rest of us. Or put it this way, his unconscious has picked up something that 
isn't apparent to the rest of us. What do you mean, picked up something? Well, if Jack doesn't know, how would I? But you must have something in mind. What could his unconscious pick up that the rest of us don't get? Well, just for instance, the rhythm of the engines, the vibration of the propellers or of the wings. Something so slightly off normal that even his conscious mind doesn't get it. And yet it's registered in that subconscious instinct that warns of impending danger. Or again, it might be the weather. Maybe he got a whiff of a storm. And his instinct for approaching danger has been so much more highly developed than ours that he'd get it before we did. That's it. Well, at least that makes some sense. Uh, where do you think you'd be going? Back to see how Hermie the hitchhiker's doing. Well, most likely he'll be asleep. If he is, he should have something over him. Well, anyway, we're doing all right so far. How you mean? Jack's maneuvered us right along the lake shore. Looks to be places to land in an emergency. Uh, it looks it from up here. But uh, what'll it be like when we get down there? You think... You think maybe those clear places might be swamps? That, or quicksand, if not worse. Just the same, it would beat landing in the top of a tree. Not if the swamps were wriggling with alligators, which sometimes they are. Well, that's a jolly thought, I And must that's say. one thing that Doc Long's mother never intended, for him to end up in the stomach of no alligator. Oh, oh Sonny, uh, he asleep? Poor little tyke. All tuckered out. Can you imagine a little kid like that? Taking what comes without a whimp. A soldier of fortune in the making, I say. The heart of a freebooter. He looks like he had plenty of pushing around in his seven years at that. Yeah, I was noticing. He could do with some feeding up. Mm, took plenty of intestinal fortitude to stay hidden back in that luggage compartment for ten hours. No kid. A boy who can... <laughs> that. There. there it comes. Reggie, you mean... Fasten yourself to your seats. But she's caught on all right again, Jack. I don't know what she's going to do. Fasten your seatbelt. Hold the kid in your lap, Jack. Just a minute. I'll get him. Here, Sonny. I'll show you how to fasten yourself in. It's going to be bad. I don't know. There. That'll keep you from getting tossed around. Sorry to be busting up your nap, Hermie. Where are we now? The jungle's still down below us. In Indians? Yeah, I'll bet there are. Here, I'll... Uh... Buckle me in and then hold you on the lap. I'm too old to be held on people's laps. Well, this is just to keep you from getting bounced on your ear. We're losing altitude fast. Well, the closer we get to the ground with the help of the engines, the less we'll bounce. You glad you came, Sonny? Yeah, doggone it. No matter what happens, I'm glad I came. That's the old fight, though. That's all I can do. Fastened in. Let her rip, Jack. We're ready for anything you've got for us. Are we going down? That's right, Hermie. How about we see Indians? If that's all you see, fella, you're going to be the luckiest little boy in the world. He's got a landing place picked out. Looks pretty good, too. Tell him not to hit any alligators. We're going down awful fast, ain't we? That's right, Hermie. And it's not going to be long now. Hang on to me like everything, Hermie. Oh. Oh, golly. Hey, that's better than the shooter shoots, even. Anybody hurt? And why would we be hurt? That's about the prettiest piece of land in an airship as anybody's ever going to see. Anybody got any idea where we are? I say, take a look out the window. Holy jumping catfish. What is it, Doc? A doggone cathedral. Cathedral? Good Lord, a New York skyscraper rising right up out of the jungle. <laughs> Temple of Vampires. Jack, would you believe in miracles? Did you 
say miracles, Reggie? I said miracles. There isn't enough damage done to this plane to put in your eye. We'll want to make sure about that. I am sure. There's nothing a department store janitor couldn't fix up with bailing wire. Mm -hmm. The undercarriage seems to be the only thing damaged at all. Then. That's all. And I'm just the man who conducted that up for an emergency takeoff. But what I don't understand is why the motors conked out on us in the first place. I think I have the answer to that. Well, then let's have it. Well, they were in perfect working order when we made the last stop at Boac. No, I made sure of that, as you very well know. All right, then there's only one thing it could be. The gasoline. Jove, so that's it. Yeah, I think that gasoline was watered. I say, you think the officials deliberately... Well, maybe the officials at the airport didn't know it was watered, and maybe they did. That doesn't enter into it. But I'll give odds that's our trouble. I say, what a rotten trick. But look here, Jack. If we're stuck out here in this jungle with watered gasoline... Well, we've got plenty of chamois. If that's the trouble, we'll have to find some way of straining it. Straining 200 gallons of gasoline through a chamois? It can be done. Oh, what a man has to do, he does. But what a job. Besides, strain it into what? We haven't got enough trouble without you thinking up more? Hey, I told Doc and Sonny not to get out of sight. Where are they? Behind you, down there at the edge of the lane. Oh. Have they got the boy with them? Mm, no. Hermes is hoping to see an Indian. <laughs> He's liable to get his wish. This looks like pretty unhealthy country. I sent Doc to look along the shore for signs of inhabitants, but that was just hoping against hope. It's crying. No such thing as good natives in this part of the world. How far into the jungle would you say that old temple is? A mm, quarter of a mile, I suppose. Hmm. How would you guess it is, anyway? Maybe some old Aztec ruins. Oh, look here, aren't you a little bit mixed up, Jack? The Aztecs were up in Mexico. Well, all I know is it's not inhabitant. You can tell that much from this distance. Oh, see, I've just had a thought. Maybe we're the first white men ever to set eyes on it. Mm. Climb up in the cabin and bring out three revolvers and some ammunition. Mm, good idea. No. We won't try to work on the plane tonight, I don't imagine. No, we got to find out what we're up against first. Mm. What about a little food? Uh, a couple cans of tomatoes, cheese and crackers, and a bar of chocolate apiece tonight. Mm, I'll break them out while I'm inside. Ask for coming, Jack. Oh, Doc. Well, where's Sonny and the boy? Well, they're coming along. Anything desperate to matter the plane? Nothing smashed we can't fix. Hell, now, ain't that a relief? What about you? Find anything? Not one doggone thing. Not anywhere. On both sides of this clearing, the growth comes right up to the edge of the lake. And I swear to my grandma, you never saw such a growth. All along the lake, huh? A human being couldn't possibly get through that jungle of vines and trees, Jack. And even if we could, the place is running over as snakes and bugs, and I don't know what kind of vermin. Did you warn Sonny and Hermie about drinking any of this water? I did that. All right, Doc. Heads up. Oh, there you are, Reggie. Put up your dukes and catch these. Huh. Now you're talking, Reggie. Shooting pistols and ammunition. Here's yours, Jack. I loaded them all around. Thanks. Put some extra shells in your pocket. I already have. And here's tonight's dinner. Oh, tie the cans up in a piece of canvas, Reggie, and then come on down. We're not eating now? No, we're going to do a little exploring. We'll take the food along. You think there'd be some way of getting through to that temple thing over there? I doubt it. Well, of course there is. There's, well, there's bound to be somebody living over there. Reggie and I just decided there wasn't. Huh? What you talking about? You mean that you think that that's nothing more than a deserted building standing out there? Well, look at it. All of one corner's crumbled in. Huh? Well, look at it yourself. Yeah, now you call attention to it. Does look like it's seen better days. Well, just the same, well, I'd mighty well like to see what's over there. So would I. There you are. You want to take it, Jack? Uh, hand it down. Before you come, shut the door of the plane and lock it. Right, we will do. Hey, what's that for? If there's any prowling natives around, we don't want them going through our stuff. Well, if there's a native in these parts, he's sure enough keeping out of sight. I'll say that for him. There she is. Jack! Uh! Oh, that's Sonny. I hear her, but I don't see her. Hey, Sonny, where are you? You ain't supposed to get out of sight. Come here, all of you. We found the path. Found the path? Sonny, can you hear me? Yeah. Stay right where you are. We're coming. Come on. Let's have a look. No, but we're coming. But Jack, a path would indicate human beings. Not necessarily. Well, you think not? It could be a path used by wild animals coming down to the lake for water. Here we are. Over here. Here we are. Over here. <laughs> Hermes turned into a doggone explorer. Got an idea he's on a picnic. Hey, Hermie and I saw those orchids hanging from the tree there, and we came over to look at them, and, and there was the path. I helped to find the path, didn't I, Sonny? That's right, Hermie. I'm good at finding paths. Mm. The ground's too hard to show any footprints. And doggone it. Well, it ain't headed in the direction of that old temple. Starts off that way. So, uh, well, what'd be the objection to following it? Doc, you now go ahead. Sonny, you stay in the middle with Hermie. Reggie, you bring up the rear. Fine, but step lively or I'll be on your heels. Well, what's that for? Well, what do you suppose it's for? Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Where do you think you are, on Main Street? Come on, Doc. Golly, Moses, you don't need to snap my head off. Take Hermie's hand and keep him on the path. Here, Hermie, give me your hand. No, I want to poke around with my stick. Take Sonny's hand and do as you're told. You don't like me, do you? 
Look, on both sides of this path is dense undergrowth full of poisonous insects and snakes. Do you understand that? Yes. All right. Give me your hand, Hermie. I don't see any snake. Hush, Hermie. Come on. I've been kind of keeping my eyes open for prints of one kind or another, but there just plain ain't any. Mm. Hey, Jack, fella, you know something? Well? I, I wonder if you should ought to talk to Hermie like you did. Is that so? Of course, it ain't exactly money out of my pocket, but just the same, I don't think you ought to. Well, Hermie's a nice little fella, and he can't help it being here. So what? Oh, I don't know. Only don't you see that hurt and scared look at comes on his face every time you lay in. All it. right, Doc, all right. Sorry. It's what I get for putting my nose in another man's business. Mm. Funny thing, though, you don't look like a man that I'd expect to find picking on kids. Notice how the branches of the trees are coming together over the path? Uh-huh. And all of them climbing vines and stuff, shutting out the sun. Yeah, and getting worse ahead. Hey, Jack, looky, will you? Just the same as going through a tunnel up ahead. You know, fella, if we're going to get much of that, we should ought to have a flashlight. I brought one. Doggone. Son of a gun. Horse away. Stuff grows down. Keep close together. Don't get so far behind. We're doing all right. Can I talk now, Sonny? Of course you can talk, Hermie. It's getting dark in here, ain't it? Uh-huh. It's the vines overhead shutting out the light. See? I'm not afraid of the dark. That's fine. Are you afraid of the dark, Reggie? Well, now, I'll tell you, Hermie. It's all according to the time and place. Well, I'm not. Only I wouldn't like to meet any old Indians in here. Well, I don't think we need to worry about that. I say up front there, Jack. What's the matter? You sure we're not getting in a little bit over our heads? I mean, if it gets much darker in the jungle like this. All right, we're coming at the end of it right ahead. Sunlight again? Yeah, that's right. We're coming out of the tunnel? So he says. Oh, that suits me right down to the ground. Every time one of those hanging vines brushes against my face, I wonder if it's a snake. Uh, I killed a snake once. Well, don't you go bothering any snakes down here. I'll kill them. Hermie, you hear me? You leave them strictly alone. Yeah. Yeah. Why? Because they're liable to be poisonous. You understand? Okay. Well, there's the sunlight ahead. It's a lot cooler in here. Well, I'll take the heat myself. Come on, let's catch up. Is Jack married to you? Oh, goodness, no. <laughs> Why did we give you that idea? Is anybody married to you? Uh-uh, nobody. Then how about you waiting for me? Ha-ha, <laughs> that's a deal. <laughs> now, here we are, out in the light again. Just a minute. Doc and Jack are down on their knees up ahead. Yeah, they act like they found something. What are they looking at? Hey, Sonny. Yeah? Jack wants you and Hermie to stay where you are for a minute. Well, what is it? What's the matter? Never mind. You stay there. Reggie, come on up here. Hey, but you've got to tell me. You can't just leave Hermie and me like this. All right, if you got to know, it's a dead man. Funny thing about him, too. There's not a wound on him any place, yet there's not a drop of blood in his body. Hey, Jack, how can you tell that? You say there's a corpse. Hello. What's this? Just what it looks like. A dead Indian. We're not a stitch except a loincloth. Yeah. Been dead since sometime last night. Indian for certain. No doubt about that. And not a very civilized Indian either. Look at those tribal marks on his forehead and chest. But Jack, this business about him not having any blood, how you know that? Color of his skin, eyeballs, fingernails. He's all bleached out. Well, maybe the Indians down here are kind of on the anemic side. <laughs> Take some of that brush and throw it over the body so Sonny and the boy can pass by without seeing it. Yeah. Good idea. So Hermie wanted to see a real Indian, huh? Well, he's not going to see this one. No sign of what killed him, huh? No. There. there. That covers him all up. There. All right, Sonny, come on. Well, there's one thing. We know now that human beings live hereabouts, even if they're wild ones. We also know they die around here. Uh, a lot of comfort that is. Come on, Sonny. We got him covered up. Just pass right on by. All right. Keep walking. We don't know. Jack. Jack, look ahead. Hmm? We're at the temple. Sure. Just stepped right out of the jungle into the courtyard. Yeah. So busy not looking where we were going, we doggone near run into it. Hey, 
That's a big house, ain't it? Well, the courtyard, all right. We're walking on paving stones covered with heavy moss. But trees and shrubs are growing right up through the stones. And I was the one who thought maybe folks lived here. Now, there is a pile of stone that is a pile of stone. Well, there's only one entrance. Shall we have a look inside? Well, of course we'll have a look. We've come too far to stop now. Doggone, stone steps as grand as you please. And what stone steps? Fifteen or twenty steps up to the door? And they reach all across the front of the building. Somebody put a lot of back-breaking work into this centuries ago. Let's go up, huh? All right, Hermie. But you stay close to us. Sure. You ever see anything like it? The way shrubs and small trees have grown right up between the stones. I suppose this jungle palace has anything to do with that dead Indian, Jack? I wouldn't know. Here. Yeah. It's a little bit frightening, isn't it? Oh, who's afraid? I'm the first one up. We going in? That's what we came up here for. Come on. Big arched doorways, but not a door in the place. The doors must have rotted away centuries ago. Hey, golly. Listen, if I didn't hear a church bell, you can call me a loony. Yeah, I heard it. Come on. Let's go inside. Well, when you look what we found. What a tremendous place. Nicaraguan government could hide its whole army in here. Jack. Yep. Jack, did you see what I just saw? What the? Something just flew from one side of the temple to the other, way up yonder. Probably an owl. Owl, my grandma. It was as big as a man, and it didn't have no wings. What's more, it was wearing a human skin, and that's all. <laughs> started from that wall over there on the left and floated as easy as you please across to this here wall. It must have been a bird. A bird with human skin? Oh, look here. I saw it, doggone it. Only, uh, and, and the, the thing didn't have no wings either. And, and it was big as a man? That's what I said, big as a man. Now, look, Doc, you can see how silly that is on the face of it. Why, it's a good 150 to 200 feet from one wall to the other. I know that. And I still say I saw. But nothing could pass through the air that distance without wings. Well, if... If there'd been wings, I'd have seen them, wouldn't I? And a bird as large as a man would have tremendous wing spread. Yes, and the flapping of such wings would make a tremendous noise in oh. a place like this. And more than that, there aren't any birds as large as men. All right, you smart fellas, have it your way. So I didn't see anything as big as a man throw through the air up there in a the half dark. Well, it was almost certainly the deception of light and shadow in the gloom, Doc. You may have thought you did. Skeptics, that's what you are. You're just a bunch of dimwit skeptics. Anyway, what do we do now? That is Hermie, all right? Uh-huh. He's sitting out on the steps with a hamper of food, eating a piece of chocolate. Well, there's no use looking for inhabitants in this place. But Jack, this is a genuine ancient temple out of some lost civilization. Let's not pass it by so casually. Well, help yourself. What do you want, the 40-cent tour? Nevertheless, <laughs> it won't hurt to nose round a little. Gee, it makes you dizzy just looking up to the ceiling. Imagine a civilization centuries ago intelligent enough to construct a temple this size. Mm. Bit of a feat, all right. Must be a clear hundred feet from those highest rafters under the roof to the floor where we stand. And don't our voices sound funny? Listen. Hello? 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 <laughs> Listen. Gee, that's the second time we heard that bell. And Dad, blame it, Jack. I still say if a bell rings, somebody must ring. Yeah, I suppose you think it was your wingless, man-sized bird who's doing it. Okay, okay. All I'm saying is... 
Why don't you come up with a better explanation? Naturally, in a temple of this size, there must be bell towers. The bell's probably exposed to the weather. When the wind blows, the bell rings. Oh, so now, now, now the wind's blowing, is it? It wasn't when we come in. It might easily be a hundred feet in the air. Oh, look here. Standing and talking isn't getting us anything. Well, let's move about, huh? All right. Fortunately, some of the roof has fallen in. Gives us sunlight. Ain't it the truth? Still reminds me of the inside of an old used coffee. Hey, come here. Come here, look what I found. Sonny, you mustn't get away from the party like this. Okay, but come and see what I found. Well, hold your horses. We're coming. What's so exciting over in this department? Look. Uh-oh. Stone stairway going up along the wall. Uh-huh. Almost missed them in the shadows. Say, will you look at this? Narrow stone steps climbing up the side of the wall, going right up toward the ceiling, and no outside railing to hang on to. Must lead to some rooms or something up there. Can't just be steps to the roof. Well, I know one way of finding Anne's crying. Shall we go up? We'll do nothing of the kind. Huh? What's eating you, Sheriff? No. I vote against it. Well, what about it, Jack? What hurts it going to do to have a look? Well, some of us could go. Those steps are too dangerous for Sonny. Besides, we've got to keep an eye on Hermie. Well, he's still out in the steps. I've been keeping an eye on him. Well, I'm not climbing those stairs. High places make me deathly ill. Well, then, uh, how about a couple of us going up and the other one stay below here at sun? Well, do you think that's a good idea? I mean, is, is there any good reason for going? How about it, Jack? Well, I would like to investigate those stairs, but I agree with Sonny. I don't like splitting up the party. Huh? Well, why not? Have you forgotten the body of that Indian out on the path? But you said yourself that didn't have anything to do with the temple. I said I didn't know. Yeah, just the same, Jack. We should know all we can about, about this place, and we will always be within calling distance. Yes, we may be here some time. We should investigate. Well, there you are. Here, here's three matches, son. Make them different lengths. We'll draw straws. The short straw stays with Sonny and keeps an eye on her. All right. Well, Doc, you're first. Draw one. You bet you. There. Ready? With pleasure. And this one is yours, Jack. Well, I got a whole match, so I'm one of those to go. Okay, Reggie. Let's be seeing your match. Right. Ha-ha! <laughs> Mine's the longest. You used to be on with Sunday, Doc, my lad. Wouldn't you know it? Jipped again. Well, I like that. Huh? You like what? Crying because you have the opportunity of my company. Yes, Doc. Where's your Texas chivalry? Well, all my life it's been like that. A conflict between adventure and female women. Love a pulling me one way and adventure's hauling me the other. <laughs> Whoa, isn't that just too doggone pathetic? Come on, Reggie. Okay. We won't be gone any longer than necessary. Well, see that you watch your step now. Gee, I don't think I could do it. Steps are so narrow, they have to go single file. Oh, Doc. Yeah, Jack? You both stay right there. Don't wander off. Now, don't you worry none about us. We ain't going no place. You know, I wonder if we should stop for all this now. It's after six o'clock. Well, what's time mean to us down here in the jungle? But we're going to have to go back on that path overhung with that tangle of branches and vines to reach the plain. And if we wait until after dark... Oh, it won't be getting dark down here before nine o'clock. Mm. What about getting something to eat? There you go. Sonny, will you tell me why it is all beautiful women have such doggone voracious appetites? <laughs> I hadn't thought about it. Well, you do. Every one of No, actually, I was thinking of Hermie. Oh, well, we, we brought some food along. Hey, looky up yonder. Where do they think they're going? Oh, they seem to have come to some kind of a ledge or something. Hi, Jack! What's up there? Hello, hello! There's a ledge up here. There seem to be rooms. D did you say a room? That's right. A whole warrant of rooms all along the ledge. Oh, anything in them? We were just investigating. Seem to be just bare stone rooms, like cells. We'll let you know if we find anything. They all seem to be empty. I imagine we're up about... 20, 30 feet, aren't we? Mm, I should say just about 30. Shall we go up a little further? Yeah, seems to be another ledge up on. It's queer. What do you make of it, all those little empty rooms? As near as I can make out, they must have been the cells used by the monks or priests. Hmm. I wonder what religion it could have been out here in the jungles. I noticed some queer marks chiseled on the wall of one of the cells. Had a, an oriental look. An oriental religion in Central America? <laughs> It does sound a little fantastic, doesn't it? Sure, Jack, go easy, do you mind? 
Ooh. You're getting up in the air. Don't look over the edge, Reggie. Well, don't worry about me doing it again. The second ledge is just ahead. Oh, quite. Oh. Timing stamps get you in the knee joint. Yeah. There. There. Well, will you look here? Hmm. This ledge is even wider than the one below. And will you look here? More cells. They must have kept an army of priests in this place. Well, come on. Let's have a look at some of them. Jack, I'm really well afraid I wasn't made for high places. I wish they wouldn't get so far away. You can hardly see them in this dim light. Looks like they're going up on another lane. Don't go. They look a long way up there, don't they? Doc, I've lost them. I can't see them anymore. Well, they must have found some more of themselves. But they said they'd keep in sight all the time. Now then, Sonny, Jack and Reggie's been looking out for himself for quite a few years now. Ooh, in the stiff neck from looking up so much. Hey, you and me both, honey. Kink in the back of my neck. Doc, the bell again. Yeah, doggone funny we can't place where it's coming from, eh? Surely the boys must have heard it. Hey, hey, there they are. Reggie's waving and pointing to the other side of the temple. Oh, I don't see anything over there. He, he must mean that that's where the bell room. What's he mean by those signs? Oh, j just wigwagging and everything's okay with him. Oh, why doesn't he yell? <laughs> Not much use that far off in a place like this. Too much echo. You couldn't tell what he was saying. Oh, they disappeared again. Oh, why don't they come on down? Oh, it looks like they want to examine some more of themselves. Man, oh man, what a splash a feller would make if he slipped off that ledge. Oh, Doc, how can you even think such things? If you now, think sonny, that... Sonny, Sonny. Hey, Sonny. What? Sonny, look, look at that. Th there it is again. Oh, Doc, what is it? Floating through the air like I said. Oh, it is as big as a man. Do you see any wings? Do you? Doc, look, look, look. It's landing on the ledge where Jack and Reggie are. Sonny, Sonny, you stay here. Doc, come back. Where are you going? I'm going up and warn Jack and Reggie. Oh, no. No, I don't want to be alone here. Hermie. Hermie, come in here. Hermie. 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 Hermie, can you hear me? Hermie, where are you? Where are you? Hermie, darling, where are you? Answer me. Hermie? Are you out here? Answer me. Who is Hermie? Oh, no, no. You are afraid? Who, who, who are you? Where, where did you come from? I've always been here. No. No, but there is no one here. Oh, yes. I am here. I, well, who are you? I am Manuel. Hmm. Have you seen Hermie? Who is Hermie? A, a little boy. A little boy? Yes, he's seven years old. He was with me just a minute ago, and he, he just disappeared. I may say so. This is very bad place for little boys. What are you? Why are you standing there dressed in those black robes from head to foot? Yes, very bad place for little boys. And not a good place for a beautiful girl. I wish the boys were here. Boys? Don't! Don't you come any closer. I have not moved since I spoke to you. You should never have entered the Temple of Vampires. What? Why did you? Temple of Vampires? You did not know? Temple of vampires? Yes. But there aren't any such things. No. No. You know there aren't. They're, they're just fairy stories told to, to chill people's blood. Ah, blood. Don't. Don't look at me like that. You are mistaken. This temple belongs to the vampires, and it is not given to many people to leave this temple once they have entered. But, Hermie, I've got to find Hermie. You are outside the temple now. You are wise, you will not ever again enter, oh, ever. But Hermie... I don't think you will ever see the boy Hermie again. Oh. I don't think you will ever want to see Hermie again. Oh, no. No. Oh. Ah. She sleeps. She falls to the floor to forget. Sonny! Sonny, where are you? Can't you hear? Jack! Reggie! Hey, here she is! Here she is! She's as white as a sheet. 
Is she hurt? Oh, what's the matter? Here, lift her up. Oh, no. Yeah, she must have fainted. <laughs> what is it, Sonny? What's the matter? Has he gone? Has he gone? Has who gone? It's just us, son. The man, the man in the black robe. You saw a man in a black robe? He said we'd never see Hermie again. Hey, where is Hermie? The vampires. The vampires. <laughs> about me. Find Hermie. Oh, looky, he's probably just wandering around somewhere. No, you don't understand. He said we'd never see Hermie again. Never see Hermie again? Who said that? What are you talking about? The, the man in the black robe. Hey, Sonny. No, Doc, listen to me. I'm telling you the truth. I ran out here to find Hermie, and there was a man. Out here on, on, on the steps of the temple? Yes. He wanted to know who Hermie was. And when I said he was a little boy, he said that this was a bad place for little boys, and, and for me, too. Well, did he say why? Yes. He said that this was the temple of vampires. Vampires? Joe. What'd I tell you, Jack? I knowed all along. Jack, you stay here with Sonny. Reggie, you're coming with me. Right on. Oh, now, just a minute, Jack. Don't argue. Reggie and I are going back in there for Hermie. And I'll keep your gun handy. Well, my shooting pistol's always handy. But, but Jack... You stay here with Sonny, and this time, don't leave her no matter what happens. Are you really saying that you think that these here vampire critters... Well, you know as much as I do. Come on, Reggie. You got a cigarette, Doc? Tailor made or roll your own. Oh, come on. You can smile, can't you? Here. Thanks. Why, I need it. Light? Mm -hmm. Oh, Sonny, your hands trembling like a leaf. Yeah, I feel my hands are like ice. Oh, here now, sugar. Yeah, I'm that way all over. Well, that ain't no way for a person to be down here in the tropics. Hey, maybe you're coming down with chills and fever. Hey, shouldn't we all be looking for Hermie? Now, you sit right where you are. But, Doc, I... Jack said for me and you to stay here. So relax. Well, I don't like it. Well, neither do I. Now, now, tell me what happened. Well, you remember we, we both saw that big thing floating through the air in the temple. Yeah. Jack and Reggie were up on the ledge. That's right. They were, they were in examining one of them priest cells, and the thing landed on the same ledge that they was on. Yeah. Well... You ran up the steps to warn them. And being left alone frightened me. I looked around for Hermie, and, and he was gone. Just gone, huh? Yeah, and then I was scared. I ran around calling for him, and finally I came out here on the steps, and and, and, and there was a man here. Indian? No, he, he talked with a soft Spanish accent, and he was dressed from head to foot in a black robe. Did he try to grab you or something? No, no, no. He was gentle, and he was soft-spoken. The only thing was that I kept having the feeling that he was drawing closer to me. But the distance between us was always the same. He didn't move. Hypnotizing, you sounds like. Yeah. Well, anyway, I, I think it was his eyes. And he said we shouldn't have come here. That this was the temple of vampires. Now, you listen to me, sonny. I may be a superstitious Texas boy, yeah. but even I know vampires is in the same category along with witches and, and werewolves and Oh, I mean, stuff stories are made out of. Yeah, they are, aren't they, Doc? There isn't any such thing. Of course, I've, I've heard of vampire bats, but they don't have the shape of a human body. Oh, I don't know. All I know is he said that this was the temple of vampires and that this was a very bad place for little boys and for girls. Yeah, and, 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 and then what happened? Oh, then everything began to go wrong. And I felt myself falling. Well, the next thing I knew, I heard you boys bending over me and talking. Well, you don't know what become of this uh, Spanish hombre. Uh-uh. Well, there wasn't hiding her hair of him when he came. we come out on the steps. Yeah, but vampires, Doc. Vampires. Well, Sonny, the tropic jungles sure enough do breed a lot of mighty queer things. Just like those vines and plants out there. Kind of slimy and bloated. A lot of them are poisonous, too. What else... Well, where else but in the tropics would you find stuff like that? Doc, you don't suppose he meant vampire bats, do you? Well, I don't know, Sonny. 
But it don't sound very reasonable, now does it? I mean, bats having a temple of their own. Oh, gee, I'm so worried about Hermie. Now, just hold your horses now. Jack and Reggie will take care of that department. Yeah, but supposing they don't? The, the, the man said that we'd never see him again. Now, look here, Sonny. Am I going to have trouble with you? Oh, what do you mean? Why, uh, this here's the sort of thing that you'll have to expect to get into if you're going to bum around the world. You asked for it, and you got it. Yeah, but, Doc... Well, we're going to always have plenty of things to think about uh, without you going female on us and making us things harder for us. Well, female? That's what I said. Tears and jitters and fainting fits. If you can't take it, you shouldn't have come along. Yeah. Yeah, I get it. Well, what about doing something about it? Well, I'll try, Doc. Really, I will. Sure. You see, all the matter with you is that you're anticipating trouble. Why, there's nothing happening to anybody. Wait until you're hurt before you start yelling. Yeah, but Hermie, Doc. Hermie. It's just what I've been telling you. He's wandered off. Jack and Reggie will find him, and that's all there is to it. Well, Reggie, over here. Can you find something? Yeah. Look here. Oh, so, more stone steps. Yes, only this time leading down. Down into the bowels of the earth to look at them. Jolly black down there, too. Well, I've got my flashlight. We're going down? Well, it's certain Hermie isn't up here in this main auditorium, whatever you want to call it. He is not. And he couldn't have gone up the stone steps along the wall because we were up there when he disappeared. So, here's the next place to look. But Jack, a little shaver like that would never have gone down into this darkness of his own free will. I know that. But if he wandered off... Well, how do we know he wandered off? But... But I thought that's what we decided. Come on, let's go down. Hmm? Anything you say. Lead on. Keep right behind me. Jack, are you taking what Sonny said seriously? <laughs> Such as what? Well, I mean, say that that chitter chatter about this being the temple of vampires. Oh, wait a minute. Yeah, look there on the walls. Oh, look here now. What kind of juicy mind would do a thing like that? Ancient religious symbols chiseled in the rock. And whoever did that was having mental nightmares. <laughs> But they're graphic. Hmm. Yeah, leave it to the old pagans. They knew how. You mean there was a time when people would allow that kind of stuff? In the good old days, people did what they were told. They sacrificed everything from raisin garlic to their virgin daughters. No wonder their civilization disappeared. Now, yeah, let's go. Valley loathes them, if you ask me. Well, that gives you a pretty good idea what this place stands for. Something pretty ugly. Are you insinuating this pagan religion is still alive? What does the name Temple of Vampires suggest, anyway? Perhaps at one time, but this is a modern world, Jack. Not down here, it isn't. This old temple's as isolated from the modern world as it was when it was built hundreds of years ago. Oh, I don't mind saying I feel a bit on the crawly side. Hey, look ahead here. Huh. Looks like a rat run. The ground under this temple must be a regular rabbit warren. Look, three, four... Five runways leading from the foot of these steps. Jack, we could get lost down here and never get out. No, I don't think it's that bad. Look at the arched stonework overhead. Jove, each one a stone tunnel. But Jack, it's not stone under our feet. Hmm. Dust of a thousand years accumulated over hard-packed clay. Dust? Well, then, if there was anyone here, wouldn't there be footprints? Yeah, that's what I'm looking for. Well, I don't believe it, Jack. In spite of what Sonny said, I don't believe there's a living human creature in this place. No, no. Hmm. What do you mean by that? Take a look at this, here in the dust. Where? Jack! Jack, that's the print of a human foot. A girl's foot. A girl? Yeah. Apparently, they don't give their women shoes down here. A barefoot girl? Huh. Jolly, huh? <laughs> yeah, come on. We'll follow this tunnel. Girl and temple of vampires. Oh, yes, yes, they're female vampires. Hmm? They're supposed to be very beautiful and seductive. Oh, that's crazy talk, Jack. Is it? As you well know, as crazy as a June bug. What about the body of that dead Indian we found out on the jungle path? Oh, look here. Forgotten that. I haven't. Not a wound on him, yet his body was drained of blood. Are you saying this really is a temple of vampires and it's preying off the native Indians down here? Isn't that what's indicated? Hmm. Uh-oh. What's this? Looks like a break in the wall. Uh-huh. A stone balustrade running alongside our path. Th throw your flash over. What's on the other side of the stone wall? Let's see. <laughs> Seems to be some kind of a pit. Lower the line. Can you see the bottom? <gasps> Jack. Jack. Well, well. Quite a collection of bones. Human bones. All of them. Human bones. The pit is littered with them. 
And not such ancient bones. Oh, Jack. Let's get out of this place. Yeah. I don't think we'll find Hermie down here. A bloody yes. slaughterhouse. That's what it is. They've been gone so long, Doc. If they were going to find Hermie, I should think they'd have done it by, by this time. Now, looky, Sonny, am I going to have to give you another pep talk? But how can you sit there like that? Haven't you got any nerves in your body? Well, you should just ought to take a look at my nerves sometimes, sugar. Well, there's been times when they get pulled so tight I can play tunes on them like a guitar. Oh, stop trying to be funny. Yep, honey, you'll be a female, all right. There's no getting away from that. I don't care if I am. A person's got a right to be frightened and worried. Hold it. What? Oh, here they come. And now ain't you sorry. Jack and Reggie? But, Doc, Doc, they haven't got Hermie with them. Uh, I see they ain't. Jack, couldn't you find him? Where's Hermie? Don't know. You, you didn't find anything? Not of Hermie. But you, you, you did find something. Nothing, except what I bally well want to forget. Why, what do you mean? Forget it. Did, uh, did you search everywhere, Jack? Well, that's impossible. It'll take days to go through all the passageways under this temple. Oh, what are we standing here for? Hello, everybody. Oh, Hermie. I wondered where all you folks were. Oh, Hermie, darling. Hermie, fella, where the blazes you been? Hermie. Hermie, what do you mean by frightening us all like this? Hey, what are you crying about? Where have you been? In there. We were just in there looking for you. I guess you didn't see us on account of we was in a little room. Who, e? Who was with you? Almost. Beautiful lady I about ever saw. Lady? Yeah. She was all dressed in black. She gave me some figs. Hermie, you didn't eat them. Sure I did. I liked her a lot, and she liked me. Did she say so? Yes, a lot of times. She said I had the nicest white neck she ever saw. The nicest white neck? Oh, Jack, let's get out of here. Just a minute. Then did she let you go? Well, a man all dressed in black came in. He took me by the hand and... Said you folks were waiting for me. The man, the man in the black robes. And was she mad? <laughs> the man took you away? Uh huh. He brought me right over to the door there and showed me where you were. Well, I'll be doggone. Sonny, maybe you wasn't seeing things after all. Yes, and she had the reddest lips and the whitest teeth I ever saw. <laughs> together again. Let's get away from this place. Before I go, I want Hermie to show me the room where he met this woman. Sure, I'll show you. Jack, you don't mean you're going to take Hermie back in there. You'll be safe enough. Well, how about the time, Jack? It's past seven o'clock now. It won't be too long now before it starts getting dark. Yeah, it won't be dark for another hour, half, two hours. Mm, take a look at the sky, Jack. Yeah, clouding over. One of those tropical jungle storms brewing. And yeah, then we'd better be off, but we'd be better off here than back in the plane. You mean spend the night in, in, in this temple? That's right. Best place in the world to get chills and fever in the tropics is to get drenching wet. Well, I don't need to get drenching to get chills in this place. Well, I'm taking Hermie back in the temple for a minute. Rest, do you want to come? No. All right. Reggie, you stay out here with Sonny. Doc, you come with Hermie and me. Well, suits me if you think it's that important. Jack. Well? Look, this is dangerous. I know it. I, I have a feeling. <laughs> Feminine intuition. I don't care what you call it. Reggie will look after you. No, I didn't mean that. I, I mean in there. Oh, there's nothing to be afraid of. Look, you don't know what you're talking about. Oh, girl. Come on. We won't be but a little. Here, Hermie. Maybe you better take me by the hand. What do I want to do that for? On account of I'm going to like it better. Sure. Doggone, I ain't never got over how big this thing is. It's darker in here than it was. It sure is, fella. That's a storm and night coming on. All right, Hermie, where's the room? Over that way. You sure about that? Well, Hermie, you must be mistaken. No, I'm not. But you can see for yourself there's no room here, just the stone wall of the temple. Well, it, it was here. I reckon you're not only mixed up, but 
just plain turned around. I bet you I ain't. Did you go up or down any stairs? Nope, just went into a room. But looky now, Hermie. You can see as plain as anybody. There ain't no room there. I don't see any. Which means there ain't any. There's that bell again. Listen. Hey, Jack. That's thunder. Yeah, there's the first indication of Reggie's storm. It didn't take no profit to smell that one coming up. Come on, that means rain. Man, will you look at her come down. Hey, Reggie, Sonny, get in here. What's the matter with you? Mike, right. we'll come in here right with you. Hey, I never saw rain like that before. The mother of cloudbursts with trimming. Goodness, when it rains down here, it rains. Didn't I tell you to keep out of the wet? Well, the wall gave us pretty good protection. Sunday, Sunday didn't want to go inside. Why, I didn't expect anything like this. It don't monkey around down here when it turns loose. W will it last long? Well, jungle rains don't usually, not this time of year. Well, we're not going to try to get back to the plane tonight. Jack, you mean we've got to spend the night here? Yes. Well, where are we going to sleep? Well, we'll figure that out when the time comes. Well, how about those monk cells up the stone stairway along the wall? There are stone benches in them. You mean up on that ledge? That... Hey, look, look. Oh, Jack, Jack, did you see that? Hey, what's the matter? One of those big things just floated across from one wall to the other, way up there in the air. Well, I didn't see any. Well, I did. Up there in the gloom, must have been 40 feet above the floor. Did it have wings? Not a wing to his name. No, just a great shadow floating through the air, big as a man. Maybe it was a man. Oh, don't talk nonsense, Hermie. Things are bad enough the way they are. A funny thing. You remember, Sonny, when Jack and Reggie was up on that second ledge up yonder and, and you and me saw one of them things float over to the same ledge? Yeah. Well, when I got up there to warn them, there wasn't a sign of anything. But we saw it. Yeah, I know. Well, maybe it's just an illusion. Lights and shadows play funny tricks in a great place like this. Hey, you, you know something? Yes, Hermie. I'm getting awful hungry. Well, you got something there, fella. Well, what about it, Jack? Uh, we just gonna stand here all night? Uh, where's that bundle of food? I have it here. I'll open her up, Reggie. We'll all feel better with something inside us. Uh, are we going to eat right here? Yeah, light's better. Pick yourself a place and squat. <laughs> what light? How about flashlight? Well, we'll save that. Well, here we are. Canned tomatoes, cheese, crackers, and bar chocolates. Here, give me them cans, Reggie. I'll open them with my knife. What's the use? We've got nothing to eat them out of. Well, what's the matter with can? Ooh, ish. Cold tomatoes out of a can. Well, you'll be surprised how good they'll taste. Here you are, Hermie. Thanks. Hey, this is like a picnic, ain't it? Cheese and crackers, Sonny? Thank you, Reggie. Dig in, Jack. Yeah. Can of tomatoes for you, Sonny. No, I, I don't think I want any. Eat them. Oh, but you have... Juice will keep you from getting thirsty. Tomatoes are good for you in this kind of climate. But I really don't want... Are you going to give us trouble? I'm oh, sorry, Give them to me, Doc. Okay, children. <laughs> Be careful you don't cut your juggler vein on that tin, Hermie. Yeah, I'm watching on. <sighs> hey, fella, that's good. Of <laughs> course it is. So I don't get a meal like this very often. That's so? Not where I come from. And where did you come from, Hermie? Oh, around. You and your father just bummed it around the country? Yeah, sure. You mean you didn't have any home at all? Not for a long time. Where did you and your father come from before he brought you to San Diego and stowed your way into our plane? Texas. The old man worked in the oil fields down there for a little while, but he liked going places best. You must have another name besides Hermie. Yeah? Don't you remember any other name? Hermie's all I ever heard. That's queer. There now, Sonny's cleaned up her whole can of tomatoes. It wasn't so bad, was it, huh? I ate them. Now do I have to say I like them? <laughs> just plain don't like tomatoes, huh? Here, just, just nibble on a little piece of chocolate to take taste out of your mouth. Got some for me, too? No, I'll just bet I have, Ernie. <laughs> Man, is she getting dark. More rain clouds. Looks like we're in for a real storm. Yeah, it's a dark in the temple now. You can't see your hand in front of you. Well, everyone finished? All with the chocolate? Now bring it along. Let's get settled for the night. Well, where are we going? Up the stone steps along the wall of the first ledge. Jack, I, I'd rather not. And I'd rather not be in this situation at all. Yeah, but I, I'm afraid of high places. And the first ledge of cells is only 20 or 30 feet up. Besides, in the dark, you won't have any sense of height. Well, is it really necessary? Yes. We can all get into one of the cells. One person can stand guard, the rest get some sleep. It makes sense, Sonny. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> Come on, then. Now, you better give us a little of that flashlight, Jack. All right. Here, over this way. I have to go up single file. Yeah. Well, I'll leave with a flashlight. 
Sonny, you follow me. All right. Doc, you come next, and then Hermie. You bring up the rear, Reggie. Oh, yes, that's me. Always the caboose. Hermie, you reach back and take Reggie's hand. Oh, I don't need any help. Reach back and take Reggie's hand. Yeah, sure. That's the boy. All right, let's go. Crowd against the wall side of the stairs, and you'll be safe enough. Jack, I'm sorry, but I'm getting dreadfully ill. Here, give me your hand. Yeah, I keep coming. I'm, I'm awfully silly about high places. Now, don't worry. Jack's got you by the hand, and I got you by the belt of your jacket in behind. You couldn't fall if you wanted to. Hey, we must be getting way up in the air. Well, we'll soon be there now. All right, hold it. We're up on the ledge. Did you pick out which cell we're going to use? Yeah, the second one. It's the largest. Easy now. Keep against the wall. It's only about three feet to the edge, and then a sheer drop. Oh, I knew I shouldn't have eaten those tomatoes. Hang on, Sonny. It's almost over. All right, Hermie? Yeah. Say, I guess this is just about as dark as it ever gets any place. Yeah, I guess you're about right. All right, now... Right in here. Oh, I'm glad that's over. Here, Sonny, lay down on this bench. Uh, turn your flash over here, Jack. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm weak in the knees. Sure you are. Now, just lay there until you get your breath. Say, our voices sound different in yeah, here. Yeah, they do that. No echo. Is this where we're going to spend the night? This is it. I like barns better. Then you got hay to sleep on. Reggie. Yes, Jack? You stay here with Sonny and Hermie. Keep your gun handy. Mm -hmm. What are you and me going to be doing in the meantime? We're going to explore along the ledge. Be sure we got it all to ourselves. Good idea. Oh, just a minute. I want to see if Sunny feels as bad as she thinks she does. Okay, I'll wait outside. How about trying one of these stone beds, Hermie? Ah. Well, I ain't never seen a place like this before. You have not? Hey, who said that? I say it. Well, I can't see you. Where are you? Right here beside you. No, no, do not reach out your hand. Do not touch me. You can see me? See? Well, you sure got better eyes than I got. Who are you anyway? You would not know if I tell you. Look, uh, are you the girl who was talking to Hermie a little while ago? Hermie? Yeah, the, the, the little kid. See, I talked with a little boy. You did, huh? Well, say... What's going on here, anyway? I do not know what you mean, what go on. Well, what's all this business about this being the temple of vampires? Oh, yes, that is true. Are you a female vampire? That is a wicked thing to say. Oh, hey, now, don't go getting mad. According to Hermie, you're the, uh, you're the prettiest thing he ever seen. So? Yeah. He said you had the reddest lips and the sharpest, whitest teeth. What's the matter? He say that? He did that. Why do you think I have red lips and sharp white teeth? You got me. Why? Why you don't go away? Well, I got caught in a rainstorm. Have to spend the night here now. So? Yeah. The little boy, he stay here too? Sure. Hey, what you interested in Herman for? Interest? Yeah, he said you was crazy about him. Kept talking about his nice white skin. Yes. White skin. What you trying to do? Give me the shivers? And there's something else I want to ask you about. What's all them human bones doing down in that pit down there under this here temple? You ask that? Well, sure, I ask that. And uh, what about that dead Indian out there on the trail with no blood in him? I think Jack would like to talk to you. Come here. No, don't let go of me. Hey, 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 look out. Oh, where'd you go? Doc, Doc, who are you talking to? Jack, Jack, no, that, that girl was here. I tried to grab her and she jumped off the ledge. Jumped off? Yeah, j just disappeared in the air.
Temple of Vampires. This is your time to get some sleep, Doc. Well, no stone benches. Not me. The others seem to be making up. Yeah, I know. Now they do. It's more than I can figure out. I'd rather sit out here and talk with you. Well, keep your voice down. Let them get what rest they can. Sure. Does it kind of make your stomach turn over? Hmm? What's that? Knowing right out in front of us about three feet is nothing but space. Just makes me want to keep away from it. Uh-huh. And that female vampire, whatever she was, just jumping out into it and floating off. You mean that's what you think she did? I ain't a fooling, Jack. She did it. Mm-hmm. And all right, then. You you tell me what to come of. I don't know. But she didn't float off. But I had a grip on her. I felt her go out and she slipped through my fingers. Maybe. And, and more than that, I was standing between her and the steps, so... Well, she couldn't have gone down that way. Now, you said that before. Yeah. You and I searched every priest cell on this blasted ledge. That's right. And did we find any sign of her? No. So, there was no way for her to get off this ledge but to jump. Now, tell me everything you can remember about her. Well, it was dark, of course, so I didn't see her. Yeah, I know. But she, she could see me. Did she say so? Yeah, she did. And e- even before that, I reached out my hand in the dark to feel where she was, and she stopped me. She said not to touch her. Uh-huh. What did she want? Well, she wanted to talk a little the way I got it. And Jack, she had the softest, silkiest little old voice. Did she ask any questions? Well, I don't think so. I, I asked most questions. Oh, wait a minute. There was one thing. What? Wanted to know if uh, we'd be keeping Hermie here all night. She uh, made a point of asking about the boy? Yeah, asked particularly. Did she say why? Seemed awful interested in his nice white skin. Maybe she likes him young. White people must be pretty exciting to them after centuries of nothing but Indians. Huh? Meaning what? Vampires. Jack, you sure enough think I was talking to a little old she-she vampire? Very red lips and sharp white teeth are characteristics. Uh Uh-huh, so I've been told. Yeah, in storybooks. Was she barefooted, you know? Well, I wouldn't be knowing that. Why? I told you about Reggie and me finding the footprints of a girl in the dust of the underground chambers. Probably hers, all right. Unless there'd be a lot of them. You think maybe there might be? I don't know. Oh, yeah. Oh, hey, I asked her about them human bones down in that underground pit. What did she say? Nothing. (laughs) That's a great help. Yeah. What else did you ask her? I don't remember much. Oh, yeah, about that dead Indian of no blood in him out on the path. Yeah? Uh Uh-huh, and she said, this is the temple of vampires. Knew all about the Indian's body, huh? Acted like it. Jack, you know, that'd explain those big man-sized things with no wings that we seen floating back and forth across the temple. The dead Indian? No, that, that vampire girl is jumping off this ledge. Maybe they do it all the time. Good trick. Make a lot of money in the circus if it's true. <laughs> yeah, I'll tell her next time I see it. No, no kidding, though. It, it does tie up in a way. Well, you better forget it. Doesn't make sense, huh? No. Yeah. Doc. Huh? What do you make of Hermie? Darn if I know. You like him? Well, how can you help it? It looks to me like a little feller who just ain't wanted by nobody. Mm-hmm. Old man was no account and got tired of having a kid around his neck, so we up and stowed him away on our airplane. Doesn't seem to miss his father. The way I got his father figured, he missed him all right. But it's a good miss. Glad to be rid of him. Yeah. You got something different figured out? Yeah. I thought so. You've been down on him from the start. And that's not like you, unless you got a reason. How you figured? Did you notice his clothes? Well, not much, I don't guess. Interesting. Do you usually find an expensive and recently pressed and clean suit of clothes on the son of a tramp? Well, I'll be rolled over and found wormy. Hands clean, neck and ears clean. That's hard to do when you're on the bum, riding freight cars, thumbing rides. Yeah, don't I know. Jack, maybe he got something there. Another thing, it isn't natural for a seven-year-old not to know his last name. You mean he's a kid from some nice home that's run away and he's not telling us the truth? It adds up. But that don't explain that you riding him the way you been. I think it does. He's got coming anything he gets if he's run away from home, worrying and frightening his folks. Well, yeah, there's that all right. And as far as I'm concerned, he's going to wish he'd never seen an airplane by the time I'm through with him. <laughs> He is a nice kid, though. No kid's nice for my money who hasn't got more sense of responsibility than that. Well, yeah, you might be wrong. Maybe. Hey, hey, Jack. No, what? Somebody's coming down, down below with a torch. 
Well, there's two of them. Three, four, five, six. Well, would you be looking at that now? That must be some kind of an election rally. Yeah, they're carrying something. Circling around the altar. Must be 20 or 30 of them. Listen. Bunch of the rumba boys getting together. All dressed in black robes like the man Sonny saw. Can you see what they're carrying? Wait. Jack. It's the body of a man. Oh, it's an Indian. Yeah, nothing but a loincloth. Suppose he's dead? Yeah, he's dead, all right. Look, they're going down the steps to the underground passages. More bones for the pit, huh? Looks like it. Hold it. And there goes the torch parade. What sort of goings on is that, anyway? Some sort of rites for the Temple of Vampires. Jack, you mean to sit there and say all that gang was vampires? How do I know? At least they seem to be priests of the temple. Yeah, robes and torches and stuff. Hey, hey, Jack. Now it's mine. Did you just now get colder, getting colder in here? Am I having a chill? <laughs> Must be you. Not to give anybody the creeps. We must be almost out on the ledge. Watch it, Jack. Don't yeah. you go walking off that ledge of sunny in your arms. It's 50 feet straight down. I'm feeling my way. Yeah, here we are. Doc, you got the flashlight? Uh, yeah. Y you want it? Flash it around. Find out where we fastened the rope. Huh? Well, there she is. Down yonder, a little to your left. Uh-huh. Now then... I'll put Sonny down for a minute. Don't forget we fastened the rope up out of reach. Yeah. Come on, step in my hand and go up after it. Okay. Uh, hold it. Got it? Yeah. There. Yeah. Now fasten it on the lower hook where I can reach it. Okay. Ooh. Wait. Boy, I don't blame Sonny for not liking high places. Well, never mind that, Doc. Help me. Uh, do what? I'm going to take Sonny across on my back. Unconscious body's kind of awkward. Th th think we can do it? Yeah. Lift her up on my back. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, here she comes. Now hold her up while I get hold of her legs. Jack, how's that? All right. Now back against the wall and hold her in place. Now come around in front. Good as done. I've got her legs around my waist. Now tie them together. Now here's a piece of rope. Oh, yeah, I get the idea. We'll do a good job of tying. If she starts to slip going over, there'll be nothing I can do. Yeah. Hey, that'll hold. Now tie her arms around my neck. Uh-huh. Jack, she's, uh, she's going to be a load. Hey, hey, listen. What, what is it? I keep feeling and I hear shuffling noises all about me. Shuffling? Well, not exactly. Uh, more like little sucking noises. You know, uh... Oh, that's great. Oh, fella, uh, how are we going to work this now? I'll take Sonny over on this rope. You take the rope down the ledge further. Okay? Sure. All right, before I jump, go down and see if your rope's all right. Good idea. Doc! Doc, what's the matter? I got it, Jack. I got it. You all right? You bet I'm all right. Did you hear the flapping of wings as he went over? What was it? What happened? Well, just one of them big he-bats are sitting there on the ledge making sucking noises at me. The rod on the ledge? Well, that was one. I let him have it, and... He high-dived off the ledge. It's time we were getting out of here. Is your rope all right? Right as rain. All right, then, let's go. And, and remember to hang on to that rope like you never hung on before. You're carrying double. Uh-huh. There. I got a good grip with my knees. Uh, how's that? All right. Now, don't waste any time, Doc. The minute I hop off, you go down and take off on your rope. You think I won't? Well, here I go. Look, Jack. Uh, yeah. Be seeing you. Man, that's like high diving in space. Well, come on, Doc, my lad. We're next. Get my rope down. There. Hey, what's that? Look out! Hey! Hey, Jack, what's the matter with Sonny? Just fainted. Come on, get her untied and off my back. You brought her across on that rope? Made it all right. Here, unfasten her feet. Well, just, just a minute. Everything been all right over here? Yes, as good as gold. Hermes still asleep. Angelina unhappy, but behaving herself. There. 
Yes, on his feet. Now untie her hands around my neck. Yeah, I'm getting it. What made her faint? Fright at having to swing across. Oh. Did you have a bad time of it? Where's Doc? He'll be here in a minute, swinging over on another rope. Uh, there she is. All right. Lift her down off my back. Quite. Uh, there, I got her. Now, put her on that stone bench alongside of Hermie. Mm. There she is. She'll be all right. What's the matter, Jack? Well, hello. You awake, Hermie? I guess so. Now you better go back to sleep. Who's lying here beside me? Sonny. Sonny? But, Jack, I haven't got any clothes on. I don't want Sonny to see me. <laughs> well, you've got a loincloth. That'll have to do you until morning. Besides, it's dark. Why doesn't she say something? Sonny? Well, she, uh, she's asleep. She'll, she'll wake up pretty soon. Well, I hope she don't until I get my clothes back. Well, that seems to bother you a lot, youngster. Yeah, sure it does. If I don't feel right without clothes. Well, you go back to sleep. We'll take care of you in the morning. I ain't sleepy now. We'll try. Okay. Jack, hmm? isn't it queer Doc hasn't come? I uh, know. I wonder if he's up to something. Hmm. Well, you know Doc. Crazy idiot. I told him to follow me right over. Well, you don't you don't suppose anything's gone wrong? Well, I don't see how it could. The bats were loose over there, but they couldn't get at him on the ledge. He has my flashlight and a gun. Hmm. Seems kind of queer, though. Well, let's get out of this priest's cell. Out on the ledge? Yeah. Hey, can I go, too? Hermie, you were going to sleep. Oh, gee whiz. Anyway, you stay right where you are. You've got enough trouble without you falling off the ledge. Okay, fella. Come on, Reggie. Not a sign of him. No. I wonder if I shouldn't go back over. Are those blood-sucking rodents loose? Bats aren't rodents. Well, they are for my money. Anyway, these big things don't look like any rodents I ever saw. Couldn't we call across to him? No, not at this distance. Echo just makes a din. Oh. I guess I'd better go. How about letting me go over? No, I've got the hang of the thing. Besides, I know the layout over there. If Doc's just stalling over there, I'll wring his neck. And once for me. Well, here I go. Good luck. Oh, Reggie. Yes, Jack? Keep a close guard on the door of the monk's cell. I'll be watching. All right. So long. Here goes. What's hey, that? What's that? Doc, Doc, is that you? Jack. What's happened here? Fella, it's like we met out here in midair. Our ropes are all tangled together. Yeah. Who? What you doing out here? I was just going back across to find you. Well, here I am. Out here swinging 50 feet from the floor. Anyway, that far from the ceiling. You think that's funny? I don't think it's one blame bit funny. Hey, hey, we're, we're spinning. Our, our ropes are coming untangled. Oh. Hang on to each other's ropes. Let's keep together for a minute. Yeah. What happened, Doc? We shouldn't have met out here. Our ropes are 10 or 15 feet apart. Yeah, I know. I, I was swinging in a circle. Oh, that's a big help. I couldn't help it, Jack. Just as I got a hold of my rope, something pushed me off the ledge. Pushed you off? Yeah, a minute sooner, and I wouldn't have had the rope in my hands. You didn't see what did it? No. Anyway, I went off the ledge sideways, and that threw me in a circle. I never even come close to our leg. Well, we're in one swell pickle. You're telling me. Then when you come along, our ropes crossed, and here we are. Well, we can't hang here all night, that's certain. What if we could? Daylight wouldn't help none, except show us how far it is to the floor. That's great. And down in this part of the country, I don't imagine they got any firemen with nets to jump into. Look, Doc. Yeah? You think you can climb your rope? Climb 50, 60 feet on this rope? Yeah. Well, I don't know. Can you? I can try. And when we've climbed it, what then? Maybe we can climb over rafters or something. Get down. Uh, you think so? Whoever put these ropes up in the first place had to get up there to fasten them. Well, the longer we just hang here, the tireder we're going to be. All right. Let's swing apart then and start climbing. Okay. <laughs> man, oh, man. What's the matter? I was just thinking, we're swinging from the end of a rope, but I didn't, I wouldn't say we were hung yet. Yeah. All right, cut loose. Okay, every man for himself. Here goes. Good luck, Jack. Oh, stop. Yeah? Don't try to do much climbing while the rope swings. Take your breath, fella, and climb. Yes, I know, Hermie, but Jack told you to go to sleep. I've been trying, Reggie, honest. <laughs> 
Just can't make it, eh? I guess it's on account I haven't got any clothes. Well, you got all the clothes the Indians wear. I guess I would make a very good Indian. You'd get used to it in time. Where'd Jack go? He went back across to the other ledge to look for Doc. This is a hard place to keep folks together, ain't it? Well, it certainly is. Is Sonny still asleep? Still sleeping. I guess the vampire lady's asleep, too. Mm, at least pretending. Oh, it's sure dark in here, ain't it, Reggie? It is that. I keep stumbling. Only way I can keep track of all of you is to make the rounds and touch you. You want to look out when you touch the vampire lady. Oh, is that so? Yeah, she bites. <laughs> they are funny people down here, don't they? They do that. Aren't you just a little sorry now? Are you stowed away in our plane came along? No, I like you fellas. Well, that's nice of you. Say so? Yeah. I guess I like Sonny best of all. Ladies' man, are you? I'm going to stick to Sonny all the rest of my life. Mm -hmm. Well, have you mentioned it to her? Not yet. But I ain't got anyone else. Well, what about your father? Oh, he didn't want me. He said I was just one more thing he had to look after. I'm not much of a father. I like you fellas a lot better. Do you? Hmm. Oh, I wonder what's keeping Jack and Doc. I guess you don't have to worry. No? Nah, there ain't nothing they can't do. No, oh, I don't know. We're running up against things this trip we've never experienced before. Listen. Did, did you hear anything? No. Did you? Something just made my back hair stand up on end. Did what? Listen, listen. I must be nervous. I, uh, I think I'll step out to the door of the cell and have a look about. Don't go very far. No, just to the door. Yeah. Well, everything seems to be all right. <coughs> oh, look out! Let me see where you are! I've got a fight on my hands! Temple of Vampires. Twelve midnight, high on the ledge above the floor of the Temple of Vampires, somewhere in the jungles of Central America. Jack and Doc Long are facing one of the strangest, most hair-raising moments in their experience. They're out in the center of the temple, each clinging to separate ropes 50 feet in the air. There is no chance for them to swing to the high ledge where Reggie is guarding the boy Hermie, the girl Sonny, and the captive vampire priestess Angelina. There is only one chance for Jack and Doc to climb the 50 or 60 foot rope to the ceiling of the temple. While they're attempting this, Reggie, unaware of what has happened to his two comrades, is having difficulties of his own in the doorway of the priest's cell high on the ledge. Sonny was still unconscious, and the vampire priestess pretended sleep. Reggie was sitting on the stone bench in the dark, talking softly to Hermie. Suddenly, he became uneasy, arose to his feet, and tiptoed to the door of the cell. As he did so, a fist struck out of the dark, staggering him, and he clinched with the unseen enemy. <laughs> Hey, you're not on the ledge. See, so that is good. You mean, you mean one of us is going over. And, and one is you. Uh, uh, didn't do it, did you? Uh, now I'm on top for a change. You will die on floor far below, crushed like eggshell. Well, I'll believe it when it happens. See, it will happen. Uh, well, try it this on your draw. That's what you get for sticking your chin out. I'll drag you... Back into the cell. There. Another chicken in the coop. Reggie, huh? is that you? No doubt about it, Hermie. We met the enemy and he is ours. I don't want him. Well, we have him. <laughs> We're going to keep him, too. He has a nice long cord around his middle to tie him with. Who is it? Well, in the dark, it's hard to say. But I think he's our old friend Manuel. We'll soon see as soon as I tie him up. Hey, have we, uh, have we got a flashlight? Jack's got one. Oh, I know that. 
You haven't got a piece of paper in your pocket, have you? I haven't got any pocket. Hmm. I ain't even got any clothes. Oh, that's right. I keep forgetting in the dark. The original loincloth kid. Are you tying him up? As a matter of fact, job's nearly finished. He was... I wish I could get some clothes before Sonny wakes up. Why do you wish that, Hermie? Hey, she's away. Hello, Sonny. You back with us? Apparently. Where are we? Hey, you better lay still. Reggie's tying up a guy. Tying up a guy? That's quite. And the job's complete. Now that I'll strike a match and have a look at this chappy we just captured. Well, th- there's so much I don't know. Uh huh. so it is, Manuel. What's that? That's right. I've just tied up the high priest himself. That is not true. Who's that? <laughs> That's Angelina, the high priestess. You have not got Manuel. You don't think we have? No, I do not think so. Well, he'll wake up in a minute and he can tell you himself. Where are Jack and Doc? Still over on the other ledge. Jack brought you over and then went back. Well, what time is it now? Just past midnight. Goodness, what a lot can happen in three hours. Mm. Well, I wish Doc and Jack would get back. How do you feel? All right. Hey, Reggie. Yeah? I've never seen Angelina yet. May I? If you want to, but it'll have to be by the light of a match. That'll do. What do you do? Sonny wants to look at you. So? Hello. I kill you. Angelina, you're really beautiful. You are blonde, no? That's right. No blonde woman is beautiful. Oh, is that friendly? I am more beautiful than you. Yes, I think you are. Where is Hermie? Over on the other stone bench. Tell Hermie to come here. You hear that, Hermie? What did you say? Angelina wants you. No, I don't like her. He doesn't like you, he says. That is not true. I give him figs to eat. Girl meets boy, girl gives boy figs, but apparently girl doesn't get boy. Mm -hmm, She does not. Now then, let's see what's happening to Manuel. He should be coming around. Got another match? A whole box. Well, hello there, Manuel. You're awake, huh? Si. Hello, Manuel. You say hello to me? Sure. You're a rat, but what the heck? Look here, Manuel. How did you get over here? Over here? Over on this ledge. Last we heard from you, you were on the other ledge. There is secret passage. You mean you really don't need a rope to get up on that ledge? That is true. Well, now, isn't that interesting? Tell me, where are those other two? Other two? We mean Jack and Doc? See, si. They're still over on the other ledge. But I did not see them over there. Just the same, that's where they are, and I wish they'd get back. Reggie? Hmm? Are you sure they're over there? Well, of course I'm sure. I was outside when Jack swung out. It's funny Manuel didn't see them. What do you intend to do with me? Hold you right here until Jack and Doc get back. I do not think they will come back, ever. You'd better forget that sort of talk. Yes, what do you mean? They will not come back. They just better had. So? Yes, because if they don't, I'll pitch you and your girlfriend off this ledge and don't think I'm not the man who can do it. They will not come back. You'll start praying that they do if you know what's good for you. An eye for an eye is how we say the game. Jack. Yes? I got a rest again. All right. How much further do you think we got to go? Up 10 or 15 feet, I imagine. Yeah. My hands and arms ache like toothache. Yeah, my hands are getting numb. We must be about 80 or 90 feet up from the floor. That's pleasant. What do you say, Jack? I say that's a pleasant thought. Oh, yeah. Well, shall we try it again? Might as well. Doc. Yeah, Jack? Got to rest again. <sighs> you and me both. Made about five or six feet that time, I wouldn't be surprised. Yeah. I got me a system of wrapping a rope around my leg so as I can kind of sit down and rest. Yeah, it helps. I sure hope there's some place for us to go when we get up there. There's got to be. Well, there better be. I don't like being a hundred feet up in the air with no place to go except straight down. Well, let's go again. Okay. Hey, Jack. Jack. Yeah? We must be almost up. 
Our rope's getting a lot steadier. Yeah, I was beginning to feel it. It's hardly swinging at all. Must be only five or six feet from where the rope's fastened to the ceiling. Should make it on our next try. Son, them's the best words I've heard in years. Feel stronger already. Well, let's go then. You bet too. <sighs> Hey, hey, Jack, Jack, I I'm touching it. I'm touching it. Good boy. And how about you? Wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Can you tell what the rope's fastened to? Seems to be some kind of a rock beam. Yeah, same here. Well, now, now we're up, what? Get up on the beam. Yeah, but how? Well, swing our legs up and hook them around the beam, I guess. Oh, that's great. What's the matter with that? Yeah, and there we are hanging head down a hundred feet up in the air. Well, I'm going to try it. Well, you watch out, fella. You ain't allowed no mistakes up here. Don't be so optimistic. Well, look out below. Here I go. Keep a grip on the rope. Hey, hey. Hey, Jack. What's that? It sounds like an earthquake. Boy, did this old temple sway. Are you all right? Yeah. It's a well place to watch an earthquake from, too. As if we didn't have enough trouble without that. Hey, hang on. Hang on, Doc. Man, oh, man. Doc, are you all right? I'm still hanging on, if that's what you mean. Well, what happened? Part of the roof fell in. And here we are hanging to the rest of the ceiling like a couple of flies. Temple of Vampires. Six o'clock in the evening at the crippled airplane somewhere in the jungles near tropical Nicaragua. After a second night of mystery and terror, the three boys, Jack, Doc, and Reggie, are together again with the girl, Sonny, and the youngster, Hermie. During the night, an earthquake shook the Temple of Vampires so that a portion of the great roof tumbled in. Reggie freed the two captives, Manuel and Angelina, and rushed Sonny and Hermie from the temple, fearing all would be crushed in the debris. Then at four o'clock this morning, just after the three had been rejoined by Jack and Doc on the steps of the temple, a second earthquake set the earth to rocking and the temple to shaking. And as the five filed down the jungle path to the lake, the great cathedral crumbled and tumbled in on itself, burying everything which remained inside beneath millions of tons of stone and rubble. And now at six o'clock in the evening of the same day, the five are resting on the ground near the airplane. If you ask me, this is a day for a celebration. You sure enough got an idea there, Reg. Why do you say that? Hasn't Reggie told you? No. What is it? Why, he's been a tinkering with the undercarriage of the plane and got it in shape for a takeoff. No. Really, Reggie? Well, it will be ready by the middle of the morning tomorrow. Oh, golly, that's wonderful. Now, how about the gasoline, Jack? Well, we've still got to strain it before we dare take off. Oh. But, Jack, we've looked high and low for something big enough to strain it into, and there ain't nothing. I know it. Say, I... Hmm? Well, I've been thinking about something. <laughs> Maybe it's crazy. No, oh, what is it? Well, don't laugh, will you? <laughs> Looky, honey, we need ideas. Sometimes the crazier they are, the better they work. Well, what about the waterproof air mattresses? We've got four of them. There you are, Jack. That's it. Well, doggone. Who says a female of the species ain't worth her weight in salt? You mean... Sonny, you've paid for your passage on this trip a hundred times over. It'll work? Why, sure it'll work. Uh, looky, Jack, we got a couple of five-gallon cans. We can strain the gas into them and then pour the clean gas into the rubber mattresses. Yes, each one of them should hold, oh, 50 gallons easily. Well, what are we waiting for? Come on, it'll take most of the night to strain it. Now you're talking. I'll get up in the plane and dig out the five-gallon cans and some chamois cloths. Can I help? You bet your sweet life you can, son. Everybody can help. Yes, the easiest way will be to drain the gas out of the tank directly into a chamois and let it run down into a can. When a can's full, pour it into the air mattress while the second tin's filling. Ah. Oh, what's the matter with you? Ah, doggone it, it makes a girl feel good to find out she's worth something. A girl don't need uh, anything but good looks. 
But when she's got good looks and brains, too, she's terrific. <laughs> ah, here come the tin cans. Got the chamois? Yeah. Catch them? I got them. All right. I'll heave the air mattresses out as soon as I can break them up. Okay. And with the gas drain and the undercarriage fixed up, I'm not bad at nobody. Well, here, give me those chamois. I'll get the gas to draining. Okay. Uh, you want some help? No, this is one man job. You can pour the gas into the mattresses. Bring along one of those empty tins, honey. Yeah, sure. Oh, what an experience. <laughs> well, how about it? You glad you had it? Yeah, Doc, I am. But honest to goodness, I will be get, glad to get back to the United States. Hey, what about Peru and Ecuador? Yeah, well, civilization, anyhow. Yeah, I could sleep in a bed and put my feet under a table again at that. I feel awful about that temple. Oh, you mean about that there earthquake, uh, knocking it into a cocked hat? No, not the temple, but Manuel and Angelina. And... Here come the mattresses. Okay, Jack. All right, Doc. I've got a full can for you. And a boy, Reggie. Looks like I got work to do, Sonny. Let me help if there's anything I can do. All right, now stand back, Remy. But I gotta learn about well, things, Reggie. You just keep your eyes open. How's it working, Reg? Smooth as silk. Get that can empty and come back here, huh? This other one's almost full. Sure thing. <clears throat> come with me, Hermie. Okay. You got something for me to do? You bet. You're gonna come in mighty handy. You got the mattresses ready, Jack? Yeah, I had to clip off the metal part where you pump the air in so I could get a hole large enough to put a funnel in. Uh-huh. All right, Hermie, come here. Sure. Now, looky, you hold the funnel in this hole in the mattress while I pour. Can you do that? Of course I can. That's easy. Atta boy, now. now. Hold it still. Hold it still. Yeah. Jack? Hmm? I just thought of something I can do. What's that? Well, we got started on this before we had any dinner. How about me digging out some food and passing it around while you folks are working? Ooh, swell idea. All right. You hungry, Doc? Lady, you don't know the hype, but... So am I, Sonny. All right. Tonight's dinner is my department. <laughs> you know, Jack, she's honest to Grandma downright happy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Just the idea that she helped us out of a scrapes made her forget all about her being female. Yeah, yeah that's all of them. Well, I'll go over and give Reggie a hand. Uh, hey, wait a minute, uh... How are we going to fasten these mattresses to keep the gas from leaking out? Well, just let them lie flat. The gas levels off, it won't run out. Uh-huh. Okay, Hermie, that's the end of that can. Yeah. Hermie, you calling me, Sonny? Uh-huh. Can you help me for a minute? Can I go? Sure, run along. Yeah, I can help you. All right, come on. <laughs> Busier than a couple of bird dogs. What do you need me for? Oh, well, look. Uh, take these canteens of water while I climb down out of the plane. Yeah, sure. Can you reach them? Yep, yep, I got him. Thank you. Here we are. Say, you're doing all right. Well, from you, Hermie, I take that as a compliment. Yeah, that was almost like a fellow would do. <laughs> all right, now we'll open some cans of tomatoes. You gonna eat some? Sure. But you hate cold tomatoes out of a can. Hermie, I'm gonna tell you something. Yeah? Mm-hmm. I'm getting so I love cold tomatoes out of a can. You do? Sure. But don't you tell Jack. Oh, no, I won't tell anybody. Oh, thanks. You know something, Sonny? What's that? Well, gee, this has been swell. Do you think so? I mean, being with all you folks. Oh, well, we've enjoyed you too, Hermie. Yeah, only... Only what? Well, I don't know what's going to happen to me when we get back to the United States. Oh. Yeah, um, my old man doesn't want me. And, and anyway, I don't know where he is now. Hermie? Yeah? You know the clothes you had on when we found you? Sure. Well, they were nice new clothes, all pressed and clean. Where did you get those? You you won't be mad at me if I tell you. Well, of course not. Well, just before my old man took me out to the airport, he took me into a Turkish bath and gave me the worst scrubbing I ever had. <laughs> yeah, I noticed you were nice and clean. Yeah. <laughs> then... Then we went into a place, you know, where they clean and press clothes. Mm -hmm. Well, we went in, and when the fellow wasn't looking, my old man grabbed a suit. You mean, stole it? You mad? Oh, but, Hermie, you didn't do it. Well, I didn't want him to do it, but he said a kid going on a trip had to be all dressed up. I see. And so that's how you came to us all dressed up and nice and clean. Yeah. I guess you can be arrested for what my old man did. Well, you just forget about that, see? 
That part of your life is all over. It is? You bet it is. Now then, how about helping me hand out the food to the workmen? You are right. Well, let's see now. We'll each slip a canteen over our shoulders. Okay. Oh, yeah? Now, first, we'll take the cocktails around. Cocktails? Uh-huh. Cans of tomatoes. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you take those two cans, and I will take these three. You ready? Sure. Well, let's go. All right, boys. First course coming up. Well, doggone. Now, that's what I call serving. Here's one for you, Jack. Thanks. Here you are, Reggie. Ah, oh, thank you, Hemi. Hey, look, let, let's drink to our takeoff tomorrow. In canned tomatoes? Well, sure, why not? Here's to heading for civilization at 12 noon tomorrow. I give you a safe takeoff and a happy landing. Bottoms up. Bottoms up! <laughs> 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 well, Sonny, I see you're drinking cold tomatoes out of a can and uh, apparently liking it. Yeah? Well, a girl can't be female all her life. <laughs> <laughs> Didn't I tell you, all you needed was a little experience. <laughs> That's right, Reggie. All right, Hermie, now let's go back for the cheese and the crackers and the dessert. Dessert uh, being a bar of chocolate. Right, a bar of chocolate with nice warm water to wash it down. <laughs> Plain if I ain't proud of the way she's coming along. Jack! Uh, Jack, look there. What's that? Look who's coming out of the jungles. Well, where? What well, doggone. Manuel. Manuel himself. You fellas got your guns? Right here in my hand. Well, keep them that way. It looks like we're going to have to shoot ourselves a high priest yet before we're done with this thing. <laughs> Temple of Vampires. Reggie. Yes, Jack. Go over and stand with Sonny and Hermie. Quite. I can drop him easy from here, Jack. No. Wait. And all the time, us are thinking him and Angelina was killed in the temple when it fell in. Hold it. All right, Manuel, we've got you covered. Come on in. He's coming with his hands up. Uh-huh. Funny. Look out for a trick. Hey, looky at his face. All right, that's close enough. Doc, go and frisk him. Yeah. I have no weapon. Doc will make sure. Nope, he's not carrying a thing. All right, you can put your hands down. I am grateful. Now, what are you doing here? I have no place to go. I am fugitive. Fugitive? Well, uh, what about all the Indian tribes in this neighborhood? I am fugitive from the Indians. Well, that's queer. I thought you were their high priest. What about their religion? Their religion is no more. With the fall of the Temple of Vampires, all is ended. Their medicine men say it is a sign. The medicine men have roused the Indians against me, the high priest. You mean the Indians are out to get you? See, they thirst for my blood. For many years, they have given their tribesmen as human sacrifices to the sacred vampires. Now they want revenge. Well, now, ain't you in a pickle? Can't say as I blame them. But why do you come to us? It is only way. If you will not give me refuge, then I am the same as dead. Well... Naturally, we're not going to let the Indians kill you. We can help you. You, you will take me with you? Well, sure we will. Now, wait a minute. But, but look, looky, Jack. Hold it. Uh, Is this the truth, Manuel? You doubt the word of Manuel, the high priest? Yes. So? Well, what do you expect us to do with you? That I do not care. If you will take me from this place, that is all I ask. Uh-huh. Oh, we can do that, Jack. Uh, take him along and drop him off at our first stop for refueling. All right, Manuel. If you're in earnest, I'll tell you what we'll do. See? We can't get out until tomorrow morning sometime. Until then, you must let us tie you up. Tie me up? Yes, just to show your good faith. I just... I do not understand. Well, for all I know, this may be some trick. If you mean what you say, you've got to let us keep you tied up until we're ready to take off. So? Well? 
You may tie me up. All right. Now you can have your choice. We we'll either tie you in the plane or, if you want to be outside, to that tree over there. Oh, hey, not in the plane, Jack. It's hotter than the inside of a boy. That's up to Manuel. I prefer to be out in the open. Okay. Reggie? Coming. Doc, you and Reggie take him over and tie him to that tree. Okay. Did you say to tie him up? Yeah, come on. To the tree over yonder. Right on. Come along, Manuel, old chap. Jack? Hmm? What's it all about? Well, I'm not sure. He says the Indians are after him. Really? Will we see them? Indians? <laughs> well, I hope not. But why, Jack? What do the Indians want with him? Well, if he's telling the truth, we're witnessing the fall of a religion. The temple was a symbol. With the symbol gone, the religion's gone. Oh, so that's it. Yes, and now they want the scalp of the head man. It's a sort of jungle revolution. And Manuel has come to us for help. That's what he says. You're not sure? No, maybe a trick. So you and Hermes stick close. Oh, yes. Well, let's get back to filtering our gasoline. Tie him up tight. Don't worry about that. Sonny, you and Hermes stay right with me. Come on. Maybe we ought to build a support if the Indians are coming. Yeah, if the Indians were going to bother us, they'd have done it long ago. I hope you're right. Better hurry and empty that can. This other one's almost full. All right. <coughs> you stay right by Reggie, you two. What you got your pistol laying out beside you for, Reggie? I can reach it in a hurry. Just when I thought all our troubles were over, and now this has to happen. Well, maybe a good thing. We were getting kind of careless, you know. It was on our toes. Hey, Jack! Jack, come here! I say. What's the matter, Doc? Come here, quick! Reggie! Yes, Jack? Watch out for Sonny and Herbie. I'm going to Doc. Right now, let us know what it is. Over here, by the tree where we tied Manuel. What's the matter? Is he gone? I'll say he ain't gone. Here, look here. What's... Yeah. Yeah. An Indian arrow through his heart. Deader than a skunk. An Indian arrow through his heart. Looks like one of his Indian friends caught up with him. Yeah. So he was telling the truth. They were after him. Well, that's one passenger we ain't carrying away with us tomorrow. The end of vampire worship in this part of the world. adjustment, and then you can turn her over again. Here she is, only 10 o'clock in the morning. We're all set to take off. Throw up that stuff, Reggie. I'll pack it away. Roger. Here it comes. Yeah. Doc, go back in the luggage compartment and see that everything's tied down. Quicker than you can shake as you leave. We're going to have a rough takeoff. We don't want anything flying around the cabin. All right, hand up the tools, Reggie. Can you reach them? Yep. Sure. How's the undercarriage look this morning? I went over it with a fine tooth comb. Yeah. Holding up beautifully. Good. Now, is that everything? That's all. All right, Sonny, get in your seat and buckle yourself in. What about me, Jack? <laughs> well, Doc will have to hold you on his lap like he did when he came down. Okay, but only while we're getting off the ground. Sure. After that, you can have the run of the ship. Jack. Hmm? Did you hear about Hermie and me? What's that? Well, last night we came to an understanding. Oh, that's so? Uh-huh. Hermie, you want to tell him? Sure. Sonny's going to adopt me. She is? That's right. Hermie and I have been through quite a lot together. We got things in common. She said she was an orphan, too. Well, I think that's great. Well, gee whiz, why not? More money than I know what to do with. Nothing to tie me down. Besides, Hermie's a swell kid. And Sonny's a swell girl. <laughs> <laughs> well, may I be the first to congratulate you both. <laughs> thank you, Jack. Yeah, thanks, fella. Yeah, now, what's all this? Well, Sonny and Hermie have just filed notice of intention. Huh? Oh? What's that mean? Yes, uh, they're going to adopt each other. Well, what do you know? Romance. Sure. Love at first sight. You know what I like about you, Sonny? No, what's that? You ain't a kissing girl. <laughs> Not a kissing girl. <laughs> I hate being kissed worse than anything. <laughs> okay, Jack, everything's tied down back here in the luggage compartment. All right, come on up front. Everybody fasten himself in his seat. That's right. There's some rough ground ahead along shoreline. No regulation runway and no joke about that. <sighs> there. All right, come on, Hermie. Let me get a good hold on you. All right. All ready back there? All set. Close the door, Reggie. Hello? All tighten your ship. And here we go. <laughs> Running like a sewing machine. Give her the gun, Jack. And 
And there we are. Goodbye, jungle. How's she handle, Jack? Every bit as good as when we got her. Hey, look. Look down below. We're flying over the old temple. What's left of the old temple? Looks like a pile of rock, man. Man, what a time we had in that place. Hey, Jack. Yes, Hermie? Will you teach me how to be a pilot? <laughs> well, you're a little bit young yet. Well, I gotta learn sometime. All right. Come on up here. See, just think. Eight hours from now, we'll be back in the United States. Aren't airplanes wonderful? Yeah, especially when they don't come down for a flop in the jungle like this one did. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> Adventures of Jack, Doc, and Reggie will come to you Monday at this same hour. I Love a Mystery, written and directed by Carlton E. Morse, comes to you Monday through Friday, featuring Russell Thorson as Jack, Jim Bowles as Doc Long, and Tony Randall as Reggie York, with Mercedes McCambridge as Sonny, Louis Van Ruten as Manuel, and Sarah Fussell as Hermie. But if you don't think there can be adventure back in the United States, then listen for The Battle of the Century, coming Monday. That's Jack, Doc, and Reggie in Battle of the Century, an hilarious, two-fisted, joyous new thriller, and I Love a Mystery, Socceroo. Mutual Broadcasting System.